Can I say that I've been re-listening to our podcast all week? You can say that. It, we're good. You liked it? I love it. I, love I do listen podcast. to it some way, sometimes on the um, on the way to school in the morning. We're so. great at this. <laughs> in 15-minute increments, I do enjoy it. I lo- but... Sometimes I'm like, wow, I can't believe it. We're so funny. <laughs> I... Well, I was listening to the end of our episode. Like, I listened to it in, like, 15-minute chunks when we were maligning our favorite yoga instructor at Peloton. Poor girl. Poor girl. And then, but I told you that this week, I take her class every day, literally. Yeah, You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. The The way we bashed her. But I told you that she tricked me into getting into crow pose, and <laughs> it actually was such a like I could have cried after. Oh, it was like, a release, wasn't it? Yeah, because she. So we're doing this flow, and she goes, "I bet you can tell where we're going with this." And I'm like, what? I, "I cannot." I was like, "I have no idea." I know it's not Warrior Two, <laughs> so she hates Warrior Two. <laughs> yeah, I did a power class with her today, and. There was no two. She it, must not well like never it been invented. My, <laughs> she barely likes Warrior One. I mean, she's like up, up, down. Get back down. <laughs> Girl. Girl. Although she did make me laugh today because we, we were in Warrior One for a second. And then she's like back down. And then she goes, if you want to do multiple chaturangas, you can. I was like, when? multiple? <laughs> <laughs> when, when do we have time for that? When do we have time for that? And sure enough, I looked at the screen and she did it. But um, oh. yeah, she she tricked me into doing crow pose, and it worked. I I like that a lot for you. Good for you. Yeah. I don't know if I know crow. Is it standing? No, it's where I you're like leaning it. forward, and you put your knees into your like armpit, and you like lean forward and oh, you bring your feet off the ground. That's hard. That's tough. So hard. So hard. One time, I think I have a little bit of PTSD. I did it, and I, I face planted. <laughs> it's been years. Mm-hmm. Right. And as we're but, like getting set up, she goes, I hope you have your crash pad set up. <laughs> and I was like, what, what are we, are we doing? Do? Can someone tell me what we're going to do? <laughs> you look around your virtual Peloton I look room. around my empty room and I'm like, does anyone else know where we're going? Where does she want me to go? <laughs> she tricked you. I don't think <laughs> I could ever me. get into Crow um, again if it wasn't at, like it, it needs to be a trick or else I'm not going to do it because yeah, I'm going to face plant. Yeah, if someone if someone was like getting into crow now, I would say no. I need to be tricked into it. Uh, same, I would say the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's probably a lot of things in my life that would also fit into that category. Yeah, you know, I would need to be tricked into doing it. <laughs> I, I'd wonder if I'd uh, if I catch it. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. I like being tricked. Honestly, I think being tricked is fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Hey. <laughs> Hi. This was a long ways to say, hey, welcome to the pod. We missed yeah, you. Not a trick. Um, I want to say, you know, the show, the turnout for Marry Me was lower than I'd hoped, friends. <laughs> and I just hope that you were just snoozing on it for a weekend and you're going to catch it this weekend. Yeah, maybe not everybody watched Marry Me. And yeah. there was a lot of Marry Me noise over the weekend. So mm-hmm. so maybe maybe there's some more people out there that need a little marry me yeah uh, i just want to say like look i'm not recap. mad i'm not i'm not angry at you but yeah. i do think you could have seen the movie and then listened to the pod at this point everyone's had time to watch the movie yeah at this rate you've had time so i'd really you know with the release of this episode i'd really like to see the marry me numbers jump <laughs> jump up no pressure <laughs> no you know what do it or i'm gonna be mad <laughs> oh We need to find a way to trick people into listening. We need to find a way to trick people into listening to our podcast. If you have any ideas, can you please write us? We can disguise the link as something else. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Like, find us on socials and DM us. Yeah. If you have any tricky marketing. tricks. (laughs) Yeah. Like, it's like a video about one thing. Honestly, I feel like our TikTok is a trick, which I love. It is a trick. Our TikTok's a good trick. (laughs) <laughs> such a trick you figured I it love, out yeah i love doing tiktok because it it sh- it it never ceases to amaze me <laughs> things that i think will get millions of views gets two views <laughs> things that i don't think anybody would watch get millions of views it's it's very confusing to it me it never ceases to amaze me 
never ceases to amaze me that TikTok. I think you're kind of doing the Lord's work on TikTok because I saw that you pulled a J-Lo interview clip with, yeah. um, who was the male yeah. actor? Was it McConaughey? Matthew McConaughey. Oh, yeah. Mm, whoops. Yeah. And um, everyone was commenting like, where'd you find this? And you're literally like, YouTube. You it's should. on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But you're just like, yeah. you're curating it and you're pulling I'm it. Curating and curating it for the masses. You're that serving was... it on a silver platter for them. Right. Maybe I should go back to that video and pull another clip. I mean, I literally opened the video. It was like 30 minutes and I moved the, the cursor forward 15 minutes and I saw this little clip and I just pulled it. Yeah. Good. I hate to. Uh, yeah. Don't tell know. them how little work you've done on it, please. I'm sorry. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, it's. People it's were a, psyched. A little bit of research. People were excited. They were like, where'd you find this? You're like a MacGyver of the internet. <laughs> my, okay, my favorite thing about social media, uh, like... When are you are post, we telling our favorite thing about social media? My favorite thing about social media is when you post content, like let's just say a movie clip or a, a, some sort of video of an actor who's not us. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> And then people leave comments talking to talking the actor to them. yeah as if as if we're them <laughs> yes, i know i'm like did you not check the username on this it's almost like okay so on uh, for one of my for one of my side hustles which is which is my um qvc instagram account which i post to like three times a year i know and yet pe people follow it let's every plug day. it what is it qvc historian, QVC historian. please follow but, um, steven What's really funny about that account is that even more so than than anything that we ever post, people are convinced that it is I the I work QVC. for QVC. Yeah, <laughs> people will be like, "Where have you been?" Talking to the host that I'm posting. Why aren't you on QVC now? It's very hard to respond. Do you think it's like a bunch of like bunch of like aunts and moms? They yeah, it's don't a lot of. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, where are you? yeah <laughs> wait what was i don't like that dress it's very much on the j-lo very... clips didn't someone write who cares <laughs> uh, yeah i responded and then i deleted it oh you did okay <laughs> good good for you i don't want to fuel into it i was feeling kind of low this week and i was reading hate comments and resp and actually like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these people yeah well you Snarky. know what i would, you know what i would want to say to somebody like that that mean mean lady that posted that nasty comment to jennifer lopez through us through us yes you know, I, what i would want to say to her and this is something i've never said in my real life but i'm waiting for the moment to say it bring it on bring it on <laughs> bring it it's on like, it's a funny phrase because i think we you, like you hear it constantly but I've never, never, I've never, never heard anyone actually say it in real life. Wow. Like, I've never said to someone earnestly, "Bring it on," yeah. or had oh, someone yeah? say that to me. Bring it, well, bring it on. <laughs> You're right. Oh my god! I don't even god. know. I, don't even, I love I don't this podcast. They, I don't even think that you say it in the movie. Mm, you're right. I don't think they do either. <laughs> or if they do, it's not memorable. It's not because there's a lot of memorable lines in this movie. So wow, lines. I freaking love our podcast. I learn something new from you every single time, Stephen. Thank right. you. I agree with you. I love the phrase "bring it on." And I think if and if I was ever it. if I was ever going to use the phrase "bring it on," I think I have aged out of it. I don't. Mm -hmm. think... It'd be inappropriate. We're too old. <laughs> it, would be, it would be inappropriate for someone like me to say to another person, "Bring it on," because I feel like you say that to a kid. Maybe if I was like babysitting. You say, I think you say it to a kid when you're a kid. Uh, fair. I, I mean, an adult saying it to a kid. Fair. It's, it's weird <laughs> if you're an adult saying it to a kid. But yeah, I, I could see myself like with the girl I used to nanny. And she's like, blah, 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 would, blah. I'd be like, bring it on, girl. Bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. But, but I'm not serious. Right. I'm not serious at all. Right. So it's like, I'm so, I think I'm just waiting for like a real earnest bring it on to wow the day that that you use bring it on in your real life i want to i want a phone call yeah okay no matter where we of, are yeah i'll think about it can you let me I'll know think about calling you yeah, yeah yeah if not then maybe later but um write it down yeah write it down okay so that on. was that was that was sort of the first thing that i thought when i was uh settling in to watch the movie mm -hmm. is you love a title you're I a wordsmith love, i do love the title I title. do love titles. It is a good title, I think. But, um, you know, it's interesting because the competition between the two squads is sort of 
is sort of less interesting than the competition within the squads themselves. So there's different people saying bring it on to other people. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, that makes total sense. It's um, They try to set it up as a rivalry between two schools, but it's kind of not. It's kind of not in yeah. the most refreshing way possible. No, in a good it way. Was, it was, it felt very, minus all the homophobic language mm-hmm. and uh, it felt and very fat now. shaming. <laughs> and, oh, total, <laughs> very, this is very pre-body positivity. This is very, oh yeah. There is, there is one way to look in this world and it's thin. thin. That's what this movie says. I kind of like tripped myself out because I almost forget that movies yeah. were so heavy handed with that messaging. It's it's every other line. You, every you it's fat so, heifer. It's like very, so many so many cow references. So many cow references, and I just remember, and I remember thinking, okay, this movie came out in two thousand, so we were in late elementary school, early middle school. What and we were like, ten in second grade. No, we were ten. So it was in the I was year two thousand. We were eight. No, I was more ninety one, so it was oh, nine well, ten almost. Well, I was either in, way. Whatever there was I, when we were <laughs> growing grade. up, there was a lot of there was a. I feel like in my school especially, there was a lot of like cow comments. Mm-hmm. That was very. So I, this this the the language in the movie is not unique in in how they refer to what people look like of no. the time. No, a lot of cow speak. Um... She puts like, there's so many like she puts the ass in in she puts the fat in cat like if there's I know that's not it but like there's no. so close I know I know that's the word example I can think of let me get my notes yeah it there's rhymes we so, under, we get it oh she puts the itch in bitch she puts right. the like it's a lot of that yeah yeah it it's um the speak in this is it's stylized right so there's that um. There's that component to it. But there are a lot of elements to the movie that felt really modern and really of the day, I would say. Really? Can't wait till we get yeah. there. Yeah, I think so. I think I think we'll get to it. But I think that the way that they deal with the the cultural appropriation is very, very current. Yeah, that did I was actually prepared to be cringing or a little bit disappointed. And yeah, um, yeah we can we can Get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's later on. But anyway, handled with Why don't with you care. start? Why don't you start with the summary, and then we yeah. can start to. All right. So bring it on from <laughs> the right. year two thousand. All right. All right. All right. Bring it on. Bring it on. <gasps> we <laughs> may have just used it in our real life. I I might count that. Yeah. Okay. Go. Bring it on. A champion high school cheerleading squad, um, led by Captain Torrance, played by Kirsten Dunst discovers its previous captain stole all of their best routines from an inner city school and must scramble to compete at this year's championships. Mm. Okay. True. True. They did steal it. Yeah. I have to well, admit, this is embarrassing for me, but I also have never seen Bring It On. And I'm not I'm not shocked anymore. <laughs> I know. What's wrong with me? I just was like... I so what so you're many. seeing, what you're seeing is you never watch this followed with the Hayden Panettiere bring it on <laughs> on a bring it on cheerathon on ABC Family on a Saturday afternoon. Unfortunately, that's exactly what I'm saying. Because here was the most frustrating part about bring it on cheerathons was that they would rarely, rarely play bring it on. It this was one, always, it was always the Hayden Panettiere one. It was always bring it on all yeah. or nothing or sorry, colon space all or, all or nothing. It Wait, actually, maybe I have seen All or Nothing. Probably. I'm sure you've seen All or Nothing. Yeah, you're right. And I've but, never seen this original. Yeah. And I and now, and rewatching it now, I think I it makes more sense why they didn't play. On ABC the, Family, nonetheless. Right. They're, they're burying they're, it. They're giving it the True Lies treatment. Yeah. Well, okay. Did you know the True Lies connection? <gasps> no. The new girl is the daughter. Oh. Uh, I knew she was um she looked familiar yeah she was the daughter in true lies but um oh wow so i was vibing on this one yeah so because the the version bring it on all or nothing with hayden panettiere is essentially the same movie Mm -hmm. just edited 
<laughs> for different faces on the women. <laughs> it's I think it's her and Solange Knowles. It's it's literally the same concept. It's just a little bit watered down. So yeah, the formula of these movies. I mean, I like it. It's like a warm hug. Um, I yeah. also read that the screenwriter for Pitch Perfect she just copied the format of Bring It On. So I felt like I'd seen this movie before. You know, it felt yeah. it felt new and somehow old. Timeless. Yeah, some sort of competitive high school spirit, competitive groups, girl groups, if we will. Um, Ladies. But um, the movie begins, and this is one of our favorite ways to begin a movie when you're just shot out of a cannon. Shot out of a cannon. You'll hear <laughs> we it a are, lot. That's we are, getting, adding that to the Star Vehicle Dictionary. Yeah, this was a true shot out of the cannon where we are watching a cheer performance in a high school gym. And it is a little bit, like, risque. It's, it's a little risque. If you listen to the words. Yeah. You can look, but don't you hump. <laughs> I was like, wait, it's what? It's so funny. I, I, You know what it did make me think is that, not that I watched a lot of cheer performances, but I saw enough during high school. You don't, you never listen to the words. No. So I, they could really slip anything in there. It, it reminded <laughs> That's me. That's how I felt. It reminded me of like, I actually, I didn't, I never did this. And I, I didn't really believe when people told me they would do this, but there was always like that really cool kid in your English class who's like, yeah. Every few lines in my paper that I submit, I always put a curse word. And then she never comments in on it, so I know she doesn't read it. She's not reading. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> she's not reading it. It's sort of like that. It's like, what can, I, what can we slip in here real quick? Yeah. Because, okay, so it, it does end up being a nightmare slash dream. But in the beginning, right. we don't have that context. So I'm going, no. wow, what high school is this? Cool. What high okay. school is this? And the they're dream, all, yeah. They're just, I, they're just bearing their midriff worth saying a lot of midriff exposed midriffs in the movie mm -hmm. which i guess is real i think I, I don't really know what cheerleaders wear but i assume they're wearing i read like on the imd movie trivia that there's not a single high school in america that has a midriff bearing uniform okay okay so let me walk that back <laughs> and so take it back so cheerleaders are always covered in their midriff so that's new okay right okay in town I thought they looked adorable. Yeah. I thought that the costumes were super cute. And if anything, it was the men's, the male cheerleaders, their shirts did not fit them. They were way too big and they were wearing baggy pants. You would have liked it a was, tighter number. Yeah. I mean, first of all, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So put, if you're going to put the ladies in a tight cheerleading outfit, Equality. throw it on the men. Yeah. Because you know what? It just looks sloppy when they were tumbling and kind of doing cartwheels or whatever you call them. You're a good judge. The 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 fabric was flailing <laughs> around in the breeze. I didn't want to see that. I wanted to see clean lines and precision. And you lose that when you are wearing baggy, baggy clothes. clothing. I'm always so, so annoyed. Just a note for the boys. Men's costumes versus women's costume, yeah. uniform, both. Yeah. I remember, like, in, like, professional sports in general, too, especially, oh, my God, um, volleyball. The women are in underwear and bras, and the men just get to wear oh just, like, God. shorts. Like, like, oh and they God. are wearing shorts that, like, ride up. It's yeah. really strange. It's super strange. I mean, welcome to, I guess I'll say America in the year 2000. But yeah. those, those so, uniforms were regulation, so I think I, I need to back off. Yeah. No one was getting I, docked for a baggy pant leg. Sure. So, yeah, shot out of a cannon movie, my favorite kind. That cheer was phenom. Really, it was really, really good. slutty. Really loved and then, it. And then, just as 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 uh, Kirsten Dunst is taking center stage, her top falls down. Mm -hmm. But I was luckily, like, no way. <laughs> wow. And classic, and in a classic style where the person can't feel that their top is no longer on. So I know. She's I was just like, wow, there. that's a lot of time. Yeah, so much time. A lot of time to have a nipple exposed and not but feel it. But luckily, luckily, it was just a dream. Mm -hmm. Or as you said, a nightmare. So Yeah, I wanted to be clear. Yeah. I think she's but not But this happy. really, and this will connect later on in the movie, but there is a sense of, of something uh, supernatural almost or magical. As we talked about before, some sort of magical, magical real, realism. Realism. <laughs> 
<laughs> there is. I'm not making that up. There's a whole magic section. and <laughs> I love magical realism in my Star Vehicles. So this was, and once we see the magical section later, I, you know, you do start to wonder to what degree was this some, is this the spirit world communicating with Kirsten Dunst about, about a potential problem coming yeah. down the pike. So I think as we well know, I have some pretty wonky comprehension issues. I just sure. like sometimes I check in and check out of a movie and I forgot that the opening was a dream sequence. <laughs> so this morning when I went to re-skim it, I went, wow, that language flew at the high school. <laughs> and I remember it, it was a dream. Well, that was what's weird is that when we do see the real cheers, they're pretty, they're talking just as crass. It's the same. So... <laughs> And this will become a recurring theme throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. But aside from Kirsten Dunst's parents, who are in literally the opening scene, um, there are there are no adults. No in the parents. Movie. Yeah. So we I see actually her parents, was just listening what? to our Cruel Intentions yesterday, and I love when there's no parents in a movie. This is a no parent movie. Love this it. is love it. this is Lord of the Flies. Yes. So in the morning, Kirsten Dunst is picked up by her boyfriend to go it's to a, high he's, school? he's making two yeah this is this was really confusing this is confusing because, <laughs> because she gets in the car and there's like a crock pot behind her and like and mattress pads and i guess conveniently enough he's gonna drop her off to high school so that he can then go and move into his dorm yeah wait and i have to say he goes tor i can't mac on you in front of the parentals yeah how 2000s <laughs> how 2000s but i did think i did think to myself okay well he's correct like i don't think oh that yeah that that's be... inappropriate it's inappropriate to her but um so yeah so he's... conveniently this is his first stop of two this <laughs> exactly for the day he has to make two stops <laughs> and what's really funny about colleges in the la area is that they the, all these movies just play boggle with like uc l and a I, I couldn't remember how they like scrambled the they letters, just scramble but, it, it. <laughs> but it was like U L A C or it wasn't Kula, but it was Kula. something else of the variety. Where I told was, you all week, I've been I've been going to type U C L A for my class, yeah. and instead I've been yeah. typing Kula. <laughs> but what did make me laugh a little bit is I think it was a small point, but I I think they were implying that he was going to a University of California. Uh, thing but then he mentions like the campus name and it was like definitely like one of the satellite you see like schools like one you've never heard of before yeah well it had to be because it was very close to high school <laughs> very close to high school and we learned that they're not in la so oh, you're right they are so, they're in san diego um, it was really funny because because he's like one day you'll meet me at the university of california blah 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 campus and um, means everything to in the world to them means nothing to us. We're like, okay. Exactly. It was such a specific detail. Um, <laughs> if anything... I'm going to kill myself I, if he's like, yeah, I'm going to UCLA. <laughs> like, right. We just are forgetting. No, it definitely wasn't. It wasn't? Okay, good. If anything, he should have graduated from UCLA 15 years ago. He looks so old. Yeah, this is it my was... favorite. I love 20-somethings in high school movies. And arguably, I, I, I guess you could say Kirsten Dunst, you know, didn't look like a college senior. But she definitely looked more the age than most of the other actors in the movie. Yeah, she's actually a teen in this. Or she's oh, like uh, 18, 19. Yeah, it definitely, there was definitely a vibe where a lot of the people were appearing to be much older, especially yeah. the boys um, and especially mm -hmm. her boyfriend. Their muscle tone was just too nice, too good. Yeah, too this good. Skinny, these weren't my scrawny friends <laughs> yeah. in high school. <laughs> Right, but they get to high school, and he's like, like you said, he has to make two stops. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you're not even going to stay for the vote? Come for on, the cheer one vote? last practice? Come on. <laughs> yeah, one last practice. Just for old time's sake. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? Is this the first day of school, and he doesn't go here? Well, that was also confusing, because the timetable was hard to understand where we were, <laughs> like, in the school year. Yeah. I guess it's also hard because there's really hard to get a marker of time in Southern California in terms of the seasons. Yeah, but fair. But there was, there was no clear messaging that this was the first day of school. Yeah, I, I assumed it was, but it also just could have been the day of the vote. Right. Um, Which is sometime they, in fall. <laughs> right. And leading up to it, very official, they have paper ballots, and they fill them out in the locker room as and the girls red. are talking 
performance of a lifetime, the way she rips the ballots from these women's hands. I loved what Big Red was bringing to the movie because I was like, okay, if I was her, I was like, okay, I'm in the movie. I'm not the star. I'm in the movie for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I am going to tear this movie up. And she did. And she, she did, and it was shocking. <laughs> Every scene she was in, she was Chewing screaming. scenery. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. Yeah. I really liked it. Yeah. And I think she made a good case for why you need a strong leader for a cheer squad. As we saw, under under Kirsten Dunn's direction, especially in the beginning. Not going well. Not going well. And then, I mean, when they all sat down on the grass outside when they were going to reveal the winner of the vote, Mm -hmm. I did think to myself, this is a really small group. There's like 10 of them. We could have just done a hand raise. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like, it didn't seem as if we needed to write the votes down. It was... (laughs) It's more dramatic. When I was gunning for field hockey captain, we did did a write down. And do you want to know what I found out? I won, but my coach deferred to second choice because I had missed a practice. So when you write it down, you can cheat. But you said something very important there. Oh, walk me back. What what do you think was the most important part of your (laughs) sentence? What do you think it was? I won. No. (laughs) The most important part of your sentence was my coach. One thing that this move, one thing that this cheer squad is missing is a coach. (laughs) We had in... In high school or middle school, I can't remember. You guys, I'm not okay. (laughs) And we had my English teacher on the first day. She was normal, normal lady. But we knew she was the cheer coach because it was in the yearbook. Mm -hmm. Day two, she comes in. She looks like she's she's working at the drive-thru window at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. She has a headset on and a microphone belt pack. And she says to us, I can serve my voice for cheer practice. So I whisper when I teach. And she uh, whispered and baby? turned up the vault every day. She wore the, the microphone pack and she would just whisper. Do you know that that's because... more damaging to your vocal cords than just talking <laughs> properly? I, mean, I, I wasn't in any position to give her vocal advice, but <laughs> at least the school had a cheer coach because... Because this one doesn't. It doesn't. They're and... not even reporting to a principal. No, no it one. is... You had to right. shop your Scrabble Club to the principal. These exactly. people, willy nilly. Who's writing the they've, checks? One of the girls' dads. Yeah, they've gone. They've really gone rogue. And once Kirsten Dunst wins the election, I guess by a landslide, hard to tell. She mm-hmm. she immediately is like a wolf pack pose or something like that. And they're like, oh my god, this is the most dangerous thing ever. And sure enough, one of the girls, Breaks I guess her almost. Neck. <laughs> breaks her neck like, i think she breaks cannot, her leg in three places because they say this it later. cannot be <laughs> this cannot be how things are supposed to run i know you unsupervised know, i love the suspension of disbelief in movies i like i said we love a little bit of magical realism yeah pretty weird that they just don't have a coach but i guess that gets in the way That's in it's the way funny the though problem. because it would have been really funny if they had kind of like a uh a weak coach. They should have like an inept const- coach. Just who chilling they in the background. Like, Shut up, Mary. Yeah. Like something yes. like that. Where yes. Constantly, yes. constantly putting her a place. Or they choose like the <laughs> oldest teacher at school, the librarian. Yeah, and, like, just because use, they, on paper they need her. We use Meredith because she's 109. And yeah. she's like asleep in the corner. Like, yeah, <laughs> she's, she's in a lawn chair. And they're like, hey, Mayor. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we run. And Big Red's like, oh, I have to pick this squad up off the ground because exactly. Meredith is useless. It that would have been, been good for the comedy funny. of this movie, too, which is very mean. Yeah. Very mean. <laughs> they're not afraid of being mean. Uh, yeah. But I did think, okay, this goes back to what I said in the beginning. When they immediately do that really complicated um, pyramid and the girl falls and breaks her neck. I did think to myself, okay, this is why that Peloton instructor has to trick you into getting into crow pose. Because if she just had us get into crow pose at the beginning of class, someone would get hurt. Liability. Needs to be a trick. Yeah, it needs to be a trick. You can't just say do it without any proper warm up. So And Kirsten Dunst is a poor coach because she's like, let's go. Yeah. And it it did (sighs) remind me too, like how like in the beginning of the pandemic when cheer had gripped the nation and everyone oh, I missed it but yes it, but and then i think when people took a step back from cheer 
they realize that, oh, that coach that we all thought was really inspiring is actually incredibly toxic. Just and abusive. Putting, <laughs> so abusive and continuously puts these children, because they are children's bodies, in severe danger. Yeah. Um, so I, I did appreciate that at the top, the movie addressed that we're living in a world of danger. For sure. In, she gets carried off in a stretcher. Not something to be lolling about. She did make me laugh, though, because she was like, I'm a quick healer. Okay. I'm a quick healer. I'll be back in three healer. weeks. <laughs> it's good. The comedy, we're we're being funny, guys. If, if you're listening to this yeah. podcast and you think we're serious, you might have a problem. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously. The comedy obviously, is too good. And that obviously shot. Obviously, breaking your neck is so bad. So obviously. Bad. Obviously. But her saying she's a quick healer, great. It was so funny. So <laughs> funny. She, that point of view shot, she's like looking up. And Kirsten's yeah. like, hey, are you okay? <laughs> and this would have been a perfect opportunity to shove Meredith, the coach, into the van, into the ambulance. Yeah, go, go uh, with her, Mare. Yeah. <laughs> just to and get her like, off their back. for this. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been just, fun. That would have been just really Just to get fun. her off, off her back. But then she goes, then Kirsten Dunst goes home. Mm-hmm. And, and we need the least... exposition to tell us that she sucks <laughs> by way of her little brother. <laughs> Right. She sucks. And not only that, her parents think that she's not so bright. Yeah. Because her mom was like, I looked at I looked at your schedule. Must be nice. Yeah. She says something about the course load, right? Must yeah, very light course load light, this light year. Light course load, huh? That's how my mom communicates, so I was very into it. But um <laughs> It did make me laugh because I did have I one of my friends we used to tell me that when she would bring a test home. Or maybe it was you. Well, if it was you, you could tell I'll me. I'll let you know. But I, I think it was story. somebody else. And she would show her mom her test. And let's say she got a 93. Her mom would look at the test and be like, what do you think your grade would be if you had studied for 10 more minutes? <laughs> <laughs> it's It wasn't me. You've told me this before. I, I love it. This is my favorite yeah. story that you have. What do you, you let's have just two imagine. stories I love, and this is one of them. <laughs> this is one of my favorite stories. But just what like, do you let's think just imagine 10 more Ten more, Ten minutes. more minutes of study. What do you think? What do you think you would have? Gotten? My mom wouldn't say that. She, I would bring home like a ninety-five, and she'd go, "Where'd the other five go?" <laughs> That's a good one. It's <laughs> a good one, right? But it was more so like just it hurt really bad because it'd be like a ninety-nine. She'd be like, "What happened to the one?" Yeah, hmm? it's be like ask my fucking teacher. Exactly. <laughs> None of my business. How about that? Yeah, but... I tried. And then Kirsten Dunst bargains with the devil, and she goes, "Fine." How about advanced advanced chemistry? Would that shut you up or something? Like <laughs> she could have just been in advanced chemistry, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. But the movie was already light in runtime, so I'm fine. Give us some backstory. I, if I could have added one more line, I would have liked the mom to respond to her and said, "So what I'm hearing is it sounds like you want to take advanced chemistry," <laughs> because that was pretty quick. She's like without without missing a beat. She goes, "Fine, I'll take advanced chem." I didn't know you could add it on the first day. I guess I guess this is a strong case for it's the first day of school. So, right, you're right. Because you in the it. next in the next scene, she does talk to somebody else, and she's like, "I'm joining Advanced Chem. You better not have chosen a lab partner." Yeah. Yup. So that does make sense. Does Chem but, ever come back? Yes, because oh, because this of is, guy. She, she uses it for clout in the in yeah in another class a very ambiguous class Mm -hmm. the new kid arrives and he sits down next to her and he looks at her textbook which conveniently says advanced chemistry yes and she's and she goes she's she's basically no big deal i take advanced chem i take advanced chem i know she she went from not taking advanced chem to bragging real quick yeah to cliff I've never had a transfer st- I may I guess maybe we have had a transfer student in high school but I I don't think that when a transfer student is Arrives. let into the class yeah I don't think they do a a roll call of where they're from no they're they don't even do an it, introduction you just walk into class and sit you just walk, right like she, what does the should, teacher call him she's like Mr. Pantone Pant Pantone, Pantone. and he's like yeah. Pantone yeah <laughs> It's like the most mildly ethnic name ever, as in probably Italian. <laughs> I'm going to go right. take a seat now. It was very, very felt like he, he also looked like he could have gone to school already. So mm-hmm. it wasn't like he, he radically stood out. Nope. <laughs> to the point where someone had to go, <gasps> loser. <laughs> 
This was great. <laughs> the that loser was cough. Great. The loser sneeze, loser cough. Wow, yeah. what a what a relic. L- right. Lost in and time. So much of the Kirsten Dunst is, is like, they didn't get the word that lo- the loser sneeze is over. It's over. It's over. over. If anyone did that in today's day and age, they would get eviscerated. I don't remember ever. I definitely never. <coughs> I definitely never received a loser sneeze, mm. and I don't remember ever hearing anyone do a loser sneeze. We did it for fun. Oh. <laughs> for fun. <laughs> for fun and games. It was. Ele- it was like a very elementary thing to do. Unless it was with your friend. Like unless you were like talking with your friend. I've never heard anyone give a loser sneeze in earnest. In the no, same way that yeah, I've never heard joke. anyone. And <laughs> loser. <laughs> yeah. That- I've not, yeah exactly yeah it was like that only, it was with your friends it was fun you only do it with people you love oh so, my god of course yes yeah i only speak poorly to people i love yeah now in the next scene okay so she's there's obviously some sort of flirtation between her mm-hmm. and the new guy and is cute He's yeah good there's right and he's very calm cool and collected he is and and then in the next scene she's walking outside and I don't know if you picked up on this, or I don't know if I was just hearing things that weren't there, mm-hmm. but one of the male cheerleaders, it felt like he was, like, suppressing a really thick Australian accent every time he was talking. Did you hear that? It felt like he was constantly choking it down. I feel like I just went, oh, California. Like, it was so bizarre. It's a California thing. And then he, thing. Said, then he says to her, I forget the context, but I just wrote down the line. The, the male cheerleader says to Kirsten Dunst, don't get all malignant on me. Yeah, the, the lingo in this <laughs> I didn't, was odd. I didn't, know what that, I didn't know what that meant, honestly. <laughs> don't get all malignant I, on me. What does that mean? I, like spreadable and toxic? I guess. As opposed to benign, spreadable, non-toxic? I guess so. I just like, I, I didn't, I've never heard someone say, don't get all malignant on me. Some some of the language in this movie, I did wonder if it was invented strictly just for the movie. Right. Which I think is it's fair. kind of like some making of some phrases happen, hoping that they stick. Yeah, it's very pitch perfect. They do, ah, excuse me. And then this, like, there was a ton of that. Right. They're like, you're being yeah, a total yeah, yeah. cheer tater. And I'm like, oh, dictator, yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of those didn't Some of them didn't, didn't land. land. <laughs> but so since big red is gone mm-hmm. <laughs> luckily miss her, only, miss her only, so much miss her so much immediately but luckily big red was the only i guess the only senior who left last year just one so they have to find one new cheerleader and... no, they have to find one new because the girl broke her neck <laughs> oh, right because the girl broke her neck i for- already forgot <laughs> see this movie's a fever dream it just, go, it just flies okay, by okay got it right because this movie, like i paper shred so many moments okay i already forgot i mean three quarters of the way through the movie i had already forgotten that she had a boyfriend so when he popped back in you're like, i was like what? who is he they do but, kind um, of you're... muddy the details sometimes like also they they constantly hint, hint out that he might be gay and then he's just not <laughs> When he comes back for the cheer competition, I was like, whoa, they're definitely saying that her boyfriend's gay. Yeah, I was waiting for it. <laughs> but um, no. Okay, so now that makes more sense. They're having cheer auditions because the girl broke her neck. Mm-hmm. And it's slim pickings. Oh, the pickings are freaking slim. The- Arguably, not a single soul was even qualified to audition. No one was qualified, and they were running it. They were running it like America's Next Top Model. Like yes. they were like real sh- shot out of a cannon. Still shot fast, out of a cannon. Fast speak. Okay, when the guy comes through, obviously they're all awful. But the one guy who does the ballerina routine, Great. I guess I, I would have picked him. I was like, why didn't you just hire him? He's a prof- he looks like a professional ballerino. And they're they look at him like ew. Eh, mm. No. <laughs> this movie this movie is really funny because they're like they're not even playing in the realm of cheer sometimes there's a guy who sings <laughs> well and this is this is something that crystallizes i would say in the last 10 minutes when kirsten dunce her character i guess we'll say kirsten dunce's Torrance. character realizes what cheer is which is a combination of every type of dance and she watches all those things i was crying including ballet <laughs> and i was like okay i think we could have solved this an hour ago we could have solved this in act one babe <laughs> if you would have hired the ballerina if you would have hired so... the man who was plucked from the stages at the met right <laughs> So they bring in the one girl's younger sister. She's she's not mm, very good either. She's lackluster, but she's easy to throw, is what they say. Easy to throw. That was right. Yeah. And then the new girl comes in. 
She's wild. Wild what, looking. What is her hairstyle? Please tell well, me. Well, here's – okay. Well, here's what I think they were doing. They were trying to do, like, not dreads, I but was gonna close say, enough. Did and she have was, dreads? No. Yeah. I think the movie thought that they were giving her light dreads, and but they, they knew that they couldn't give her real dreads because you can't just take dreads out and have the straight hair that they wanted her to have. Yeah. So they, they just sort of – put what looked like glue in her hair and made little wavy strands i was like is this an early scrunch scenario was, do you remember when girls in your middle school scrunched their hair yeah it felt a mild I, scrunch yeah a mild scrunch didn't work but what they're trying to say is that her hair is disgusting that's what they're trying to communicate <laughs> what they're trying to, to us. communicate is she's not from here she's from she's la not from here City. and City. The city. She's from the city. Yeah. And again, this is where I realized, okay, there are truly no adults here. Yes. Because they're having these these auditioners do incredibly dangerous stunts. No mats. No mats. That no scared mats. me. They were like round off back handspring, double layout, double tuck. And I was like, what? Right. I kept waiting for Missy to say no. Not right here. And one thing, that was her name, Missy. Yeah. Um, I looked it up this morning. One of, so. I really appreciated that she came prepared with her audition form filled out. There's nothing There's nothing more annoying than when someone shows up to something and they haven't filled out the form ahead of time. And they're scrambling, so, wasting they're my scrambling. time and their time. Exactly. Yeah. If someone gives you the form ahead of time and you don't fill it out, I think it reveals everything about you. Like when I found out what position you wanted to work on a cruise ship. Mm-hmm. In this moment, I knew everything about her. So and yeah. what I did like about the scene is that – is that Kirsten Dunst sort of drops any pretense and goes, no, we have to, we have to choose her. Yeah, she's, she's the obviously best. the best. Yeah. And the other girls are like, no. And then this is another phrase that I've always wanted to use, but I've never been able to in a serious way. Yes. But when, when Kirsten Dunst is like, well, I'm pulling rank. Yes. She says it a lot in this movie. Yeah. I'm it's a rank. really great, it's a really, really great phrase. That I guess you can only say if you have rank. If you but are it was the boss. Nice yeah. If you are the boss. So mm-hmm. it was nice one to day. see. <laughs> one day. One day. Yeah. Me one day. The I pod, run the Steve, I'm pulling rank. You're off yeah. the pod. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to. Yeah. One day when we run the factory ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did appreciate the fact that Kirsten Dunn saw her talent. She did. Or what it was. She respected herself enough to say that. And I, I yeah. couldn't be more grateful. Also, they were making some light, not like light comments on Kirsten Dunst's character she wanted to at least re- the day they found out Big Red was retiring I don't know why Big Red was back for the day of the reveal but Kirsten Dunst's character is so worried about giving her a proper send off so they're for, trying to oh say yeah. she's nice Kirsten's oh, nice oh for sure everyone's Kirsten- mean she's nice yeah she's a cheerleader with a heart of gold heart of gold yeah that's what she is and you know what it's Kirsten Dunst right she's, I think um, she's leaning and I yeah. think that's why it's a good case for why it is certainly a star vehicle because the movie really works because it's using a public perception of Kirsten Dunst yeah. to help fuel the movie. And um, she's like a little scrappy too. Like she's 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 the one who says I'm pulling rank in a yeah. bitchy tone, and right. also she's got a heart of gold. Right, and you buy that's it. A, that's a tough balance. That's a tough balance. You've been you've been working on that your whole life. Yeah, I have. How did you know that we're working on that? Just a hunch. But um, <laughs> me telling you about therapy every week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But this is the scene. This is where I wrote down. Oh my! Like this is when I realized it was the girl from True Lies. It's the angsty daughter from True Lies, mm-hmm. and she's kind of angsty here too. So yep. that makes sense. Type. Type. And um. And so is her brother. So is her brother. <laughs> this this did make me laugh, because one time I went to a training program to teach us how to teach people how to learn vocabulary and the word that we were learning how to teach people was verboten which means forbidden wow. and but this made me laugh when she goes oh and by uh, one of the cheerleaders says to the new girl she, they, she goes oh are those tattoos real you should know they're verboten <laughs> that was the um one of the cheer judges who was working on sat words 
Oh, in yeah. oh right. One right, of right. the one of them. It might have been Kirsten Dunst. She goes, the "SATs were last month," or like she <laughs> she makes a comment like, "Why are you still using them?" <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> funny. It was really funny. But it's when funny. she says they're verboten, <laughs> yeah. And then angsty angsty Missy got like licks no licks her oh, middle yeah. finger and then wipes it. Wipes it off. I got bored but... in fourth period. <laughs> yep. It. Okay, so we learned that she is obviously the most talented, and she is the most talented. And, and then we start to learn, like Kirsten Dunst is obviously fearing for what's to come this year. And then we get this flashback where she was at a cheerleading jamboree <laughs> camp. camp. <laughs> and big red honestly, there. I big red Happy was there. Year. <laughs> I didn't understand how the ceremony worked. I didn't get but, it at all. Okay, I guess there was a stick, which didn't have to be held at all times. It just couldn't touch the ground. Am I to understand that correctly? I think so. I think it, yeah, that's fair. But she and but she didn't know this beforehand because she gets dared to drop it. She gets dared by Big Red to pick up the stick, which is permitted, and then hand it to another group of girls. Mm-hmm. But then Big Red tells her to drop it before... Yes. And I guess preying on her, Torrance's ignorance that she doesn't right. know that if you drop the stick, right, you're in for a world of pain. You're going to hell or something, or it's you're cursed. No, no, no. going to Hades. Hades. <laughs> They're trying to keep this movie PG thirteen, so they they keep all of the homophobia. They don't say hell, but um, <laughs> keep all right, the homophobia. So, change hell to Hades. <laughs> right. So they, we see that Kirsten Dunst, Dunst drops the magical stick. And she is cursed. But what was really strange about this scene is that Big Red has this chip on her shoulder where she says constantly, I left, I paved the golden brick road for you to get to nationals. But I was like, if you screwed her over in a magical, mystical, spiritual ceremony, did you really? Did you really, babe? Because it's you are going to send her to Hades. Yeah. So Is this the magical it, realism part that you wanted to get to? Right. Because yes. we see it come back later in the movie as well. But so this is where we learn that this the summer before this curse had happened. And Kirsten Dunst is starting to bring it up to the other girls. And she's yeah. like, hey, don't you remember? I'm a cursed woman. Yeah. I'm cursed. <laughs> I'm cursed. Mm-hmm. And... I guess the other girls buy into it because she had dropped the spirit stick. Yeah, but, I would. Um, I mean, in high school especially, I'd be like, it seems like it. Right. Now maybe I don't believe in that stuff, you know? Right. <laughs> now the next scene is great because we finally get to see our girls in action because we are at a football game. and oh, yeah. And then this is really where I kind of sat back, sat back and kind of relaxed in my chair and started to think about cheer, like cheerleading. Mm-hmm. Because Hard. it's very it's very strange to me, because the cheerleaders their goal is to motivate, right? right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'd, I'd say. But they're motivating the audience, yeah. who's not playing the game, mm-hmm. as opposed to motivating the boys on the field. Yeah. Well, or the girls boys on the, the field. field suck. Suck. They suck. <laughs> it's just funny because they're shouting commands to the audience to play better but the audience isn't the one that's playing the game yeah and it did bring me back to high school (laughs) when we would go to football games and the cheerleaders were there and people would just yell back at the cheerleaders (laughs) heckle them yeah heckle them a little bit (laughs) shut up (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm trying to think if in the order of events have we revealed yet that the cheers have been stolen because isn't this the football game where the other team crashes well, there's two because this, oh, okay. the this is the first one where okay, okay. this is the first one where there's the other team, the other cheerleading team there who like pull up their skirts and it says "You suck" you on suck it. Suck on the the and butts. Kirsten Dunst like, "That's okay, something. Hey, you're anyway. gonna pump our gas way. You're gonna pump our gas one day." <gasps> <that scene? laughs> Classism so galore in this movie. Yeah, and they do it twice. So in case you miss it the first time, they repeat that they're going to be pumping their gas. For my day. comprehension, I love a repeat, honestly. Yeah, but I did, I did like this scene as well because it does remind you that number one, the boys suck. The football team is terrible. Mm-hmm. I love and, playing in a world where this is true, by the way, because normally, but like, it's the always true. Well, normally in like these high school movies, the footballers are like everything. They're good. They're they're going for the championship. I'm like, no, put them yeah. in their place. They're the losers who do the loser sneeze. 
You know what? Okay, you're making a really good point because even those two boys who make the loser sneeze yeah. thing, they actually never say that they're on the football team. So like one thing that we don't get in the movie, which is really refreshing, is we don't get that intermix between cheerleaders and football players. I was psyched. Like her boyfriend is an ex cheerleader, not an ex football. Is an ex cheerleader, and even if those two bullies are on the football team, the movie never tells us they are, and there's yeah. never any like motivation for the girls to want to forge relationships with any of the football players. Yeah. So in that respect, it was actually really refreshing. Refreshing anytime- ahead of its time. Yeah. And another like another tally in the corner of magical realism for me because i just like that this is this is a world where the high school is just cheer that's it the high school high school is just cheer and it's nothing else matters not even ap chem (laughs) right well she's just taking advanced (laughs) oh just advanced my bad it is it is funny where you see this football players with all these pads on kind of hugging each other essentially like that's what it looks like but yeah and then you have cheerleaders being catapulted into the air yes. over a track where they could literally Die. snap their necks <laughs> to try to i just loved it yeah so and the male you're... worth mentioning the male cheerleaders just in general feels yeah. ahead of its time i don't know about yeah. you there were no male cheerleaders in my school none and we could have no... used them we could have used the muscle no male cheerleaders, but also what I liked is that the male cheerleaders were not strictly gay or feminine. There was yeah. a mix between... There was an, a healthy mix of abusers and gay men on the team. <laughs> That's right. Because so, normally the abusers are on the football team. Right. So we had to get them in there somewhere. So we had, so, a, we had an insert an abuser on the cheer squad. <laughs> That's right. So... <laughs> the finger slip, uh, finger slip guy. Right. So, but you're right. So then we sort of get another parallel scene where they're, the the new girl decides to take Kirsten Dunst to L.A., the city. Just just general L.A. For, an, for a spontaneous field trip. And then we go to the South Central High yeah. School. They're about to, worth mentioning, they're about to throw down in the parking lot. And Kirsten Dunst is like, get out. Let's go. And oh, Missy's yeah. like, get in. And Kirsten's like, wait, oh, what? Right. And she's like, no, get in. And yeah, they cause... do drive us to ambiguous Los Angeles from San Diego, which doesn't feel close. No, I don't know my California geography. Me but neither. But this is but very I... similar to Four Christmases, where I was like, <laughs> I don't think we should be here in that short amount of time. I don't but... think we should make it for the 5 p.m. cheer. <laughs> 5 p.m. cheer. So <laughs> Left LA you're at right. a tight four. And we see that Gabrielle Union squad is doing the same cheer, just instead of Toros, they're saying Clovers. Yes. What's a Toro? And, well, I don't want to let it derail I think us for too I long. think they're, re- they're referring to a bull. Oh, okay. Because the, the boys put the little horns up. When I didn't they come know what a Toro the girls was. At one, I, yeah, I think they're just, re- I think Rams. it's like a bull. Yeah. <laughs> Go Rams. Go Rams. So. Oh, not, not Super Bowl Rams, Fordham Rams. Fordham Rams, in case you're wondering. In case you were wondering. So, Gabrielle Union looks amazing. So good. Glistening. Beautiful. They are giving her the early 2000s, like, whitewash treatment um, in terms of straight hair. But, you know, it's fine. Yeah. And if anything, I just wish we had more scenes with her. Because, Mm -hmm. like we said at the top, they're really setting up this rivalry between these two cheer squads. Yeah. And even the poster is split in half with Kirsten Dunst on one side and Gabrielle Union on the other. But it's not a real 50-50 split of the movie. I would say it's more 70-30 or yeah. 75-25. 75-25 Kier- in favor of Kirsten. <laughs> oh, yeah. In favor and of And Torrance and the other squad. The... Yeah. So. I'm also just like now articulating to myself. What? Like. Would these schools ever really compete against each other ever? Because they're so far. They are they're so, so far. far. Right. Here's they certainly wouldn't compete on a local level. No but way. I just, but I think that what the movie does sort of imply is that they should have seen each other in nationals at least. And Yeah, but they didn't since, because the Clovers could never afford to go. Correct. Okay, okay. So All right. comprehension right, check. Like, Everybody. You're right. I don't think they would be they're they're not gonna be competing on like a district level. Yeah, they're no way. Be, so because it does seem quite far, but yeah, yeah, so we learned that they've stolen all their routines. Yeah, and because cons- from... Kirsten Dunst is nice. She didn't know. She had no idea. 
she had no idea she was she was woefully ignorant to this mm-hmm. and uh now she's like i can't believe it i can't believe that we stole these these routines and now they're gonna have to find a way to come up with new routines mm-hmm. uh, and not a single soul on the squad is a choreographer or can come up with a single move that would rival no, the old one right like they have no foundational cheerleading skills they don't know they can't improvise at all so they have to hire a choreographer Oof. who is affordable i guess he's gonna charge them two thousand dollars two thousand and this scene did make me laugh someone's they, are you talking about the car wash well, before they get to the car wash, okay. she goes to the rich girl on the squad. Yeah. I mean, all these girls seem super rich. And what did she say to her? This is how I greeted you today when we signed yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. <laughs> she I was goes, like, what, what do I have, ATM written on my forehead or whatever? And they're like, no, I was thinking more D-A-D-D-Y. <laughs> right. And then the girl goes, Daddy, oh, fine. I'm sure I could get him to give us $500. 500 But that's it. And then this line, I it was the first time that I like, openly scream laugh because I don't know what it was about her delivery of it but Kirsten Dunst almost looks towards the camera and goes okay so we only need 1500 more dollars and I was like yeah yeah that's what that means I was like I know you've been taking advanced chemistry but I was like I think we can all handle that I'm dead it was funny because when when they name a really specific dollar amount you think that it's going to come up Later, never, I guess. never again. And I mean, they do a, a, a car wash at fifteen dollars a car, so I guess they had to wash a hundred cars. Yes. But it was just very funny with the specificity that she quickly does the math and realizes they're going to be fifteen hundred dollars short. I'm dead. For the choreographer. For me, it was for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's um. You could just cut away. Yeah. I think I get my dad to give us five hundred. Great. Fundraiser this weekend, ladies. Cut to car wash. Sexy car wash. One of the sluttiest high school car washes I've ever seen. <laughs> Again, not an ounce of supervision. No adults. Nope. This was not school sponsored. Nope. And there doesn't even seem to be like a very cohesive lineup for the cars. They're just kind of all just angled in there. It, it seemed like it was going to be really difficult once you got your car wash to get it out of the lot. Yeah. <laughs> Were you backing out? Were you pulling through? Lord only knows. Yeah. Right. And there's some more flirtation between Kirsten Dunst and the new guy. Yeah. There's like this weird like sister, brother, are they a couple vibes between. They looked, you know, siblings are dating. Tough. Siblings are dating. Tough to tell. I was like, we need to post these two on siblings are dating because it was We should. That would be funny. Just for the pod. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Just for research. But. um, They looked like either or. They look like either or. (laughs) Um, but luckily they're able to, I guess, wash a hundred cars, which does seem doable. So mm-hmm, they're sure. able to raise the $1,500 and they hire a choreographer. Now I, I know did not that. I not like him. Right. I knew you were going to say that. And I knew that his, <laughs> I knew that his, his, um, kind of presentation and the way that he conducted business was really inappropriate. He was, he was saying really mean, mean things to these girls so about their mean. weight about their weight and what they look like everyone was but fat the skinniest was... person on the squad fat <laughs> he's like he's like T- what did you eat today okay cut that in half, half. <laughs> so <laughs> triggered so bad but i did think to myself okay at least we have a little bit of adult supervision because okay yeah uh, not that not that he was he was any better but the at kids, least they're yeah. Yeah, at least there was a little bit of adult supervision. Um, you know what's funny is that, like, when you think of this movie, all people, the first thing they want to quote is Spirit Fingers. And yeah, why? It's, like, the it's, least it's, interesting it's part. It's the least interesting part of the movie. Yeah, I agree with and, you. And uh, even watching it back this time, I was sort of, I, I knew it was coming. And then when he did it, yeah, I thought to myself, oh, that wasn't that funny. It oh, yeah. Compared to the rest of the movie. Having, like only this one experience watching this movie i went oh that's spirit fingers huh. right if anything it was funnier watching him shove what looked to be a handful of hot tamales in his mouth but i guess we were supposed to think they were performance enhancing drugs oh yeah but... what, those red pills I mean, yeah is he just like hopped up on adderall or something like what's this guy's deal 
Yeah, I, think I didn't like his to... casting. I feel like no. I wish he was a member of the LGBTQ plus community, or I wish he were. You know what? We can't confirm that he was or wasn't. So whatever. Right, I was gonna say you don't. <laughs> uh, I just wanted, um, like, yeah, just somebody different. I, it's hard. Like, I struggle when a white, an older white man is just like you're fat. Okay, here's I what would have been. Here's what would have been better. Let's hear the rewrite. Okay. Is if they would have hired someone who actually knew what they were doing. Yeah. They come in and they give them like a truly advanced cheer thing to do. Okay. And like these girls can't do it at all. Okay. And the and the, the cheer, the coach is like, aren't you guys supposed to be champions? You guys can't do the basic moves. And then he walks out on them and is like, like, you're not worth my time. I thought you guys were champions, but you guys are just frauds. Yeah. And it would have helped add to this idea that these girls really have no skills because he sort of this guy just came in there and just told them all that they were overweight and yeah well i guess was gonna feed them diet pills or or perhaps uh, another paper shred moment for you and me um he functions to drive the story forward because they've been swindled because he gives the same routine to everybody (laughs) he's a snake oil salesman and he gives all the girls up the western seaboard the same routine for a tight two thousand dollars so he's making bank right. selling this same routine to everybody. Right. Also, I did, just to harp on this scene for a little longer, if sure. this were done today, I'm like, yeah. what would they talk about besides how fat everybody was? Like, this is so ingrained in my person. Yeah. Like, well, from also, movies. Okay, as someone who's seen, I would say, the first eight season of Dance Moms, there's mm-hmm. a better way to do these scenes, and it's the Abby Lee Miller School of Dance where oh, it's just but funny. Abby like you, just came 10 years too late for this right and her her method is much funnier because <laughs> you just have the coach sitting in the corner yelling <laughs> yelling commands and then this and she doesn't comment on what they she doesn't comment on the girl's bodies that yeah, would be disgusting that'd be insane she's just like that's bad like yeah, no you suck. you're a you're a bad dancer you're at the bottom of the pyramid. bottom of the pyramid so that would have been actually really funny is the way she did... would pit the girls against each other <laughs> yeah like nia was always on the bottom of the pyramid so, so rude so i think that if, if if they would have done the abby lee miller route it probably would have been it would have been funnier and i think it would have been a little less a little more harmless his was just so mean and then to find out that he was a snake oil salesman was was mm. hard. hard and they didn't find that out until they went to the competition i know so they've been dieting for at least four weeks <laughs> right. before they found out to not listen to him and they go to the competition because this is the first round of the competition and mm-hmm. this was nice to see sponsored by claire's oh Which yes is, all the judges were wearing claire's lanyards i love claire's I know, and I was thinking... You're okay, a little too old it? to wear Claire's at that point, but it's <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, I was thinking, okay, what if they made all the girls get their ears pierced? <laughs> At Claire's in the movie? Yeah. yeah. Claire's is like, you can have our name and you can have our money, but, but you have there to needs get your to be ears. an ear piercing scene. There needs to be... I was like, because I didn't know anybody that ever went to Claire's for goods. They only went there for services. Yeah. They would go to get their ears pierced and then... Services, not goods. <laughs> right. Well, it always used to make me laugh because girls would be like, I went to Claire's and I got my ears pierced for free. And I was like, okay, but then what did they charge you for the earrings? Paid for the earrings. (laughs) Your mom paid for the earrings, sweetie. (laughs) Exactly. I'm like, it's the same thing that happens with hermit crabs. They give you the hermit crab for free, but you have to buy the $30. Yeah. (laughs) And the stupid sponge and all the food. Right. Oh, hermit crabs were a vibe. Also, Claire's traumatized so many young girls from my grade really the way they pierced ears yeah they were just were not qualified to get it even <laughs> yeah it well <laughs> if you had an uneven ear job it was from claire's you knew, you knew it was from claire's, Sorry, claire's. so Sorry, claire's. um so yeah we get to see them at the competition they go to the competition and you're right this is really traumatic because we find out that another group has the same routine mm-hmm. same spirit the fingers. toros do theirs it's not very good and um there there's a lot of uh a lot of robot dancing <laughs> yeah what was they that they do a lot of like getting in line mm-hmm. and <laughs> swinging their mm-hmm. arms around which <laughs> made me laugh i was like that must have been hot in the year 2000 i think yeah. it was a lot of a lot of pseudo rocket dancing where they get in line and do a kick and then drop a robot arm yeah so they look like they, I... they were playing the game machine 
where all the bodies right. try to make up one machine. It's a <laughs> yeah, really, exactly. it's like an icebreaker <laughs> game. Yeah. So did you have, to, did think you, to did myself, you have to do that at Fordham? I hope not. Uh, I I know I played that game in some sort of icebreaker Hate environment. That game. But um, the <laughs> I just thought to myself, okay, if these girls had done this routine once, maybe for an audience, someone would have said, "Oh, are you sure?" <laughs> because it doesn't. It even just watching it, I thought, "Oh, this that's not it? good. That's not good." I didn't see what I, I didn't see any stunts. I didn't see any tumbles. I didn't see any anything that would have wowed me. Yeah, and low I'm, energy. And I'm an amateur. I'm an I don't I don't know the details, but yeah. what I know is that it didn't look. What this is I was where I, I got to hand it to the director. They're like, we're not going to give you any fancy camera movements to make you think that this should be cooler than it is. We're just yeah. going to show you how shitty it is by just keeping the camera still. Yeah. And um, I always – I die at stuff like that. Like when they do, when they want you to think this is the better team, they'll give them the fancy camera angles. Right. <laughs> well, and this is why this scene did work is because up until this scene – we never saw them perform the routine. I know. So for that, a movie about cheerleading, not so much cheering, right? Right. But I think it's only effective here because as we're building up to it, you're expecting this performance to be insane. Mm-hmm. And then when they do it and they're basically playing the locomotion, it's... Losers. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Losers. Losers. So... Yeah, it's a lackluster it, performance. It's embarrassing. Right. I kind of felt like secondhand embarrassment. Like, felt a little bit of right. rage. And then this is where this is where Kirsten Dunst again is like, guys, I told you, like, I dropped the spirit stick. I'm going to Hades. This is my <laughs> consequence. And the girls are like, what forever are the most do? wild backstory I can think of. <laughs> yeah, it, they really shoehorn it in when they need to. When they need it. They finish this disastrous routine, which they should have known ahead of time. And then yeah. once again, we're. We're trapped in Hades, so how do we get um, out? <laughs> <laughs> this and again, Big Too Red is there, and good. I was like, "Don't you have school? Like, why isn't she in college? Big Red should have been in college at this point." She's um, she's coming back to check up on the girls. Yeah, yeah. But now they're going to regroup, and they're going to learn an actual routine for the national finals because. The judge lets us know that this is an unprecedented event, and the only reason Kirsten Dunst's team is going to go to nationals is because they won last year and they got an automatic buy mm-hmm. into nationals. To which I would have said, "Then why did you like? Who cares about this?" <laughs> so I wish I would have known that ahead of time. I love so, when the screenplay just magically resolves itself. It's very nice. I can really just take it. I can just exhale and feel good. Yeah, he's like, "Don't worry, you guys are going to nationals, but You're still in." You're still in only because we don't know how to deal with this unprecedented cheer crime. Yeah. So there's no there's no precedent for this. Yeah. I went wow. But for wow. the first time, the girls are going to have to choreograph their own cheer. Yeah, and no one's something they should have been doing it. from the be- from the beginning. Something that they probably <laughs> should have studied from the get, but you know they're <gasps> used to cheating. They're used to cheating. So it time. did make me laugh though, because Kirsten Dunst begins to do a roll call of all the different dance styles that they're gonna learn. And so she's like funny. ballet, whatever, ballroom. And it's Latin the best dance. montage I've ever seen. You just see flashes of each. <laughs> even with, mime. Even mime. That was my favorite. <laughs> when I saw mime, I was crying. And, it was and, really funny. And half of my brain went, not a bad idea. Not a Actually, bad idea. Actually, I think I think mime is a fabulous technique to learn as a cheerleader <laughs> don't you it's all about telling the a story way you said fabulous and oh. also um yeah i remember being in um theater class in high school and acting and mime is so useful it is so, so useful. useful it is about behavior and performance mm. without words yeah you're constructing a world for other people to live in yes it's like welcome to, to my box it. yeah you have to see it before we can see it that's right. So, so I was so down for the different, the montage. Everything is was, sort of but, speed rolling. What were you going to say? But when she, when she kicks off the montage, <laughs> she's like, she's like, and don't worry. We don't have to be prepared for the football game because the football team sucks. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and they like cut to the football game and like the cheerleaders are just standing on the, like the track, like talking about the routine. And it was, it was really funny because like to dispose of the football team in one fell swoop like that they was... Suck. 
they suck. <laughs> it's so funny. Like one of my favorite things that, that screenwriting can do is they'll plant a seed and then they'll do a callback. And it's very yeah. funny to me. And it, and it ties up very neatly. These yeah. callbacks were actually so like unstructured that it was so funny. <laughs> it did make me laugh I because. I was crying. And I was like, I did think to myself, sucks. you're right. You're right. They do suck. We don't need to worry about them. And they continue to learn all these pretty standard dance practices Mm -hmm. and even contemporary even contemporary okay and then they then they learn that gabrielle union's team is not going to go to nationals even though they place first in the regional level Mm -hmm. um because they don't have the money yeah and And kirsten dunst is gutted for them she's gutted she's she's like yeah but (laughs) And this is what people do on Survivor all the time, Ugh. where they're like, they're like, I don't want to go to the end with the loser. I want to go to the end the with best. the best. I'm like, I don't. I want to get that on the Never. table right now. I want to go no. to the end with the loser. I want to go to the I end with the person I can for sure beat. Yes. So. <laughs> so I'm so confused by that, but okay. Yeah. And she brings Gabrielle Union's team a check that her dad, I guess, after she her dad has the money handles for her this. father. She slaps him on the shoulder. Come on, ask your company. Yeah. Could you ask your dad to just ask his company for two thousand okay. dollars or however much it was? Well, what I was gonna say is that Kirsten Dunst couldn't find the money from her dad for the two thousand dollar dance instructor. Yeah. But she has enough money to fly fifteen girls and boys to Florida yeah. and get them lodging from her dad. But luckily Gabrielle Union says no. Ian. Thank God. I was so scared. I was. I, this is the point of the yeah. movie where I'm as tense as tense can be because I'm going, oh, please, God, no. Don't let that be a beat in this movie. Yeah, because what you don't want to happen is you don't want Gabrielle Union to have to do a scene where she thanks Kirsten Dunst for the money yeah, and no. says, without you, we wouldn't be here. No, no. I want but, no white savior anything. Please, God. Right. Please, so it's, God. it felt very refreshing in that way. Um yeah. And what I really liked about Gabrielle Union's whole thing was that, and it's, it's a real stark contrast between her and Kirsten Dunst and some of those girls, is she repeatedly tells them, she's like, I'm not going to act like you. I have class. Yeah. And she, yeah. And she does. Not in a class economical sense, but just in like, I'm not going to behave like you. You guys are the cheaters. You guys are the ones who uh, have no skills at all. Like, I don't need to engage with you. And she yeah. does it. <laughs> She had the real upper hand most of the movie. It was nice. Yeah. Like, it, it's unfair because, like we said, it's a real 75-25 split. Right. You don't get enough so, time with them. But, like, because Gabrielle Union's squad is not constantly there one-upping, they, yeah. it really does look like they've taken the high road. They just oh, look like sure. they're better. They're a better squad. And they squad didn't need to, better. but they, they chose to. And yeah. yeah, luckily, they are able to get the funding. They go on, like, um, an Oprah yeah style show and they they submit for the funding and they get it Mm -hmm. and um that's exciting it felt but again it's just like it it felt great but i wish that we would have had a little bit more time with them to really understand the the girls especially some of the other girls that were there um i think it would have been nice um i just kind of wanted to live with them for a little because they were fun And the speed at which they were talking, which it's not just the squad, it's like the whole movie. It's yeah. very fast. Um, right. This felt like musical theater. Right. Like It felt like we were ramping up to a song a lot of times. Because <laughs> I was like, damn, this is fast. But when they're all damn. on the gym floor talking about how they can't afford it, um, yeah. a really fun squad, really fast talking, would have loved more of them. Love them. Right. And, okay, so they're going to go. Everyone's going to go. We're going to go to Tampa, Florida. Tampa? And- Tempe? Tampa. Isn't it in Florida? Oh, you said Tampa. Yeah, Tampa. Do you remember on 30 Rock? What is your Jane, accent, Tampa? Where, <laughs> well, on 30 Rock, where Jane Krakowski's character was like, was like, I went to the Royal Tampa Academy of Dramatic Tricks for two weeks. That's where she got her, her degree. And her speech is next level in that. Her like speech patterns and yeah. diction. So they go to they go to Tampa, Florida. Tampa. And okay, I'm I'm in Tampa. No, no adults. Don't worry, guys. Still no adults here no on a cross country trip. Chaperoning. <laughs> no one. And are they in hotel rooms alone? They are. I don't know. It's gross. The one girl's popping her zits onto the mirror. I wanted to throw oh, up the during way that, that scene. The, she, someone said something kind of gross. Yeah, they're like you're. You're badoobing the mirror. Badoobling. <laughs> it was, and then they like badoobing. showed it. It was dis. 
disgusting. See, I love popping zits, so no. I was down. No. But real unhinged hotel behavior. Someone yeah. said stop eating. Yeah, someone said stop eating. Now, okay, night before, you can eat, do whatever. Yeah. Carbo the day mode. of the com- the day of the competition, and this is where I did think that they did make a mistake and that they've clearly never competed before. It's like you don't eat those heavy, heavy energy supplements oh, right before you do bars. a cheer routine. Yeah, no, no, I no. I can never eat a bar as long as I live because I Ew. I lived off of those in high school and college. Like I just ate bars for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're so, so heavy. So like yeah. when the one girl vomed after eating one and then doing a cheer routine. Oh, that was disgusting. I did, I did think to myself, okay, well, what did you expect? <laughs> like, Girl, girl. You don't. You don't inhale a protein bar. You don't inhale and, a cliff bar and then expect yeah. to perform. Oh, yeah. Cliff bars are – I do like cliff bars, but they are very heavy. I, I can't and eat them anymore. I'm so yeah, sad about you, this. They're so heavy. You can go through them, and then you're, like, burned out by them I'm, after I'm a while. burned out for a lifetime of cliff – no more cliff bars for my whole life. But, you know what I was – oh, go ahead. No, oh, I mean, I'm going to change back to the vomit. I just don't think it's funny. I can't do a vomit psych gag in a movie. Yeah, and this was – Okay, not so to be whatever, gross. but like it didn't even look real. It was so. It was oatmeal. It was like oatmeal. It was just. <laughs> it was like me. Uh, Honestly, like, thank God. Yeah, I, I mean, want, I don't need it to be real, but I don't want real throw up ever in a movie. Yeah. So they're doing this. Everyone's nerves are on edge, and then both of the teams end up doing their respective cheers. This part was actually the most boring part of the movie for me. Is oh watching my, cut both to the chase. Yeah, because we did we end up watching both groups do their cheer routines and it was just I didn't even know who we were rooting for. So yeah. it was like it was like, okay, they were both good. I I, I am honestly both. Said I don't know. I did think to myself, I've never been thrown up in the air before. I wonder what that feels like. You would have been a flyer too, I bet. <laughs> no, I think I'm too tall. Oh wait, yeah, and you're a dude, so like just by way of that, your mus- yeah. your musculature would would render you a spotter. But <laughs> honestly, like this part was like eight nine minutes in the movie, and we just watched two routines after another. Yeah, and it pay was attention like, to the camera angles because that's who's gonna win. <laughs> yeah. So luckily, spoiler alert: Gabrielle Union's team, the Clovers they win. win. They win the Claire's Tampa competition. <laughs> Sponsored again, they're still wearing the Claire's lanyards. God love Claire's. The Claire's cup. <laughs> the Claire's cup. Dad, I want merch. I want Claire's yeah. merch. The Claire's cup, they win, and yes. it feels right. Like, I think yeah. there was no other way to get out of this movie than to have Gabrielle Union's team win. No, I'm very thankful. I saw it coming a million miles away. I was like, there's yeah. no other way to end this movie. Than that. Thank God they didn't do a tie. That would have been so Ugh. unfortunate. No, no Ugh. tie. And Kirsten, they're like, w- did what happened? We got second, and it feels like first. Like she's she's got a new higher awareness. Um, yeah. I love how we've ignored the total B plot in this whole movie, which is all the love stuff between her and her boyfriend <laughs> and her and Cliff. Oh yeah, you her, know, her, her we've only got an hour and a half here, cares? friends. Honestly, it's like. <laughs> That's the thing with these high school romances is that, you know, they're not going to last. And if they do, that's wonderful. But, you know, her old boyfriend, you knew right from the start, they're not going to work out. No, and, yeah. And I wanted the more interesting choice of him getting caught yeah. sleeping with a dude. But he gets caught with a woman. <laughs> he does get caught. And Cliff right. finds out that she had a boyfriend the whole time. Right. He didn't know. And he, he gets, gets pretty offended, heartbroken. It's but... the very classic beats, you know, that – that minute 75, he's down in the dumps because his girl, could, yeah. you know, was with somebody else. She's down in the dumps because her boyfriend sucks. It all gets resolved in the end. Everybody is happy. She's going to pursue, I guess, a romantic relationship with him. Mm-hmm. And then she, once again, Kirsten Dunst roll, throws Chance to the wind and rolls her fate again. With the and stick. she drops a steer, spirit stick. Yeah. And she's like and she's like, Oh, guess another year I'm going to Hades. And I'm and like, You like, really you really shouldn't talk like that. I was like <laughs> I would be like, I wouldn't really I wouldn't be trying to do this again. I don't want to relive that year. Absolutely not. You don't I was like, this is why my parents never let us have Ouija boards growing up. I was like, You don't just you don't play around with you this don't kind of tempt stuff. Fate like that. 
I was like, what if what if the gods just gave you a buy for a year and they were like, let's see if she's able to like handle this and we'll just give her a few challenges. And now she's now she's being outright disrespectful to Greek gods. Yeah. I don't like that. No. But she does say, maybe we'll just burn it anyway. Good luck. Your faith's sealed, sweetheart. I mean, back on the Ouija board thing, nothing. Yeah. You can't burn a Ouija board once you've opened no. up the portal. In every movie, Doesn't what help. happens is they, they in the middle of the night, they get up and they throw it in the dumpster outside. <laughs> and where is it in the next morning? Right back Back where on it the was. table. <laughs> exactly. So that spirit stick is going nowhere. Going nowhere. The parallels of spirit stick to Ouija board. Yeah. Perfect. It's just one of those things where Imagine it's like, they go why throw it in the dumpster. There? <laughs> it felt like maybe this movie had, and I enjoyed all of them, but it felt like yeah. it had maybe one too many plot points. Because we didn't need the spirit stick thing. for the, the movie works without the spirit stick. If we could have cut five minutes of spirit stick and added five minutes of Gabrielle Union, I think would've we would have been in a... Yeah, because... Um, well, I guess what they're trying to communicate by the end, which is super boring, is that it wasn't the spirit stick. It was just the fact that they were cheater, cheater, pumpkin eaters. Yeah, but like we knew it wasn't the spirit but stick we, from we, minute 10. But we knew that. So <laughs> so it was like for nothing. It was for nothing. I would have loved to see her double down on I'm Cursed. Yeah. I want to see worse things happen to her in other capacities, like not just cheer capacities. Right. Show like, let's me make a, a failing grade in advanced chem. Yeah, like let's see some body horror. Let's see mm-hmm. some, like all of a sudden, like she's taking the advanced chem final and her pen starts writing without her permission yes. and she gets a zero. Yeah. And then her mom says something really mean to her. Yeah. So, or if we even want to just keep it in the realm of what we've built, give yeah. me two more nightmare dream sequences where but you freak something out. Something even more scary. Even more scary than the opening, than being yeah. nude in front of your whole school. Yeah. And um, double down on that. Give me two more dream sequences where it's just like your worst nightmare come true. And then she wakes up and she goes, this, I dropped the spirit stick. Yeah. Spirit stick. Spirit stick. Yeah. And I would have loved what you said. Um, right. She, let's just say because she drops it, she gets to take on the spirit stick from that summer. And it's just yeah. glaring at her from across her bedroom. Exactly. And she just, she, she can almost hear the spirit stick. Every night it moves a little bit closer to her. Yeah. And she does do the throw out move. And then because we're not in a horror film, uh, Cliff comes to her house to apologize or something and he brings it in. He goes, oh, you dropped something. Exactly. And she's like, no! no not she does like a mime. Stick. She does like a mime. Stop it. She boxes in the door. <laughs> yeah. I just love the spirit stick. Give me more spirit stick. Or cut so spirit we're stick. Saying- and more yeah. Gabriel Union. <laughs> Make a choice. Either Make a call choice. The movie, call the movie Spirit Stick or don't. Or don't. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. <laughs> so then don't put the Spirit Stick in. <laughs> Otherwise, call it Spirit Stick and it's a Spirit Stick movie. Yes. Double yeah. down on Spirit Stick or cut it. We're, yeah. We were not happy with this. You, you towed the line. Towed the line. <laughs> like give us what we want. Give us Stick. Yeah, give us a stick because literally this is the end of the movie and that's it. Also, so, did you think maybe the spirit stick should have shattered when she dropped it? <laughs> nothing really hmm. happened. A gem no. or two yeah, fell it off. Yeah, nothing really happened. So <laughs> what I'm, what I think is the appropriate conclusion is that it's still working. Yeah. So the magic five is second not rule gone. applies. Yeah, and they're both cursed, both those girls. Yeah. So. Good luck, ladies. We always ladies to... in Hades. <gasps> That's the sequel. La- ladies in Hades. Ladies in Hades. <laughs> Do you want to know what I kept thinking? Okay. I think they should ignore what's gone on in the Bring It On canon universe, right? Ignore that. Yeah, obviously. Reboot the series Big Red and Gabrielle Union's time in high school together. Oh, because they were, yeah, like a, like a prequel? It wouldn't really be a prequel because it wouldn't make sense because it would just be a whole movie of Big Red driving her car two and a half hours to and fro to get yeah. routines. With the spirit stick staring at her in the passenger yeah, seat. Yeah, spirit sticks in the, strapped in the passenger seat. But So it wouldn't make sense as a prequel, but I just think that we start over with the franchise. Yeah. We reboot. Yeah. And it's Big Red and Gabrielle Union in high school together. And mm. you know, so one transfers in, and we've got to see them duke it out for Captain. Mm. 
you Sounds know. Sounds good to me. I just think it's the more interesting story. <laughs> I think there's plenty of interesting stories to be had with this. So yeah, let's see them all. Let's see Ladies in Hades. Let's see Spirit Stick. Let's yeah. see all these different options. But leave leave Bring It On All or Nothing out of it because yeah, we've seen I don't it want enough. anything. We've seen it enough. Yeah. And the cut for TV version. I'm done. Yeah, it's always the cut for TV version. There's fade outs and... right before commercial. <laughs> yeah, a couple of lines are sliced and diced. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to it think. Was... I did have one question for you because I know what? you kind of get your disgust meter is like different than mine. What did you think of the toothbrushing scene? Did you think that was gross? I thought it was funny, well, but when he like enters the bathroom and they brush their teeth together, they're doing like a toothbrush rivalry and they just keep spitting on the other person. It was. Spitting. Yeah, I guess I guess it was flirtatious. I didn't love to see it. Yeah. Um, I think what would have been funnier is if instead of out spitting each other, they <laughs> they kept upping their ante. Like one person grabs the floss, somebody grabs a water pick, somebody yeah. starts like <laughs> yeah, just it's a competition, funnier, a real competition. Funnier ways, funnier ways to clean your mouth. Like I'm gonna get my mouth cleaner. I do yeah, this with exactly. my siblings at home. Like we match each other in brush stroke and cadence. Right. And as you speed up, I speed up, speed up, speed up. You go to the tongue, I go to scrape my tongue. Exactly. So, and so I something win. like that, where it was like constantly resetting for the high score, yeah. could have been more interesting. Yeah. And again, no, no parents there at that house. Yeah. But that's nice to see they still brush their teeth, even with no supervision. Even with no supervision. Yeah. Good for them. Good for them. Well, this oh, was well. a real two thousands romp. I just you yeah. love to see it. I mean, you got to ignore every other word that comes out of these people's mouths. Absolutely. Um, but I'm prepared to do it, and I'm happy we, to do we it. We saw Gili. We know how to turn our ears on and off. Yes. So oh my god. Yeah. I knew when I wasn't supposed to listen, and I just chose not to. I'm trained in the art of yeah. You know, early two thousands film. Early two thousands film. Oh my god. Yes. And just the fashion was wonderful to see. A lot of spaghetti straps. A lot of butterfly clips. I thought a lot of the fashion felt very current, too. It did, yeah. It's all coming back. So yeah. it felt very of the time. And um, the only yeah. thing I was, like, shocked beyond belief to see was in the locker room, all the girls are wearing, like, very big underwear. <laughs> it's like, damn. Yeah. It's a lot well, of I underwear. Think, I think, like you said before, they were definitely threading the PG-13 needle where they wanted yeah. to be safely PG-13, but right up against R. Because yes. – PG-13 movies are only fun in, if you're a teenager when you watch them and you feel like you're getting away with watching an R movie. Yeah, yeah. And they did that with the the heightened speak. They are not. They don't have yeah. to curse if they no, can call you. not a lot of cursing, you, but they can say, you know, they can talk around things. Yeah, itch and bitch. Yep. You're right. Well, another gem of wisdom from Stephen at the end of our pod. Um, PG-13 movies are only fun if you feel like you're getting away with an R. That's true. That's true. Cool. All right. I feel good about that, Stephen. Yeah. Thank you, Kirsten Dunst, Oscar, now Oscar nominee. Thank you, Oscar nominee, Kirsten Dunst. I've loved watching your work. I think you're phenomenal. And um, she's a real chameleon. She does a lot. She does a lot. She's the Sofia Coppola's and all that. So, As Holly Madison said in her birthday episode of The Girls Next Door, Marie Antoinette is my number two favorite movie. <laughs> Which to me was just the funniest way to phrase that you like the movie Marie Antoinette. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard in like the last six months. And you know how Holly always like deadpans things and is so serious. She's completely deadpan. Like she was still, being completely so honest. Much She's stillness. Like, she was like, "It's my number two favorite movie." I love it. <laughs> but without revealing what her number one is, That's what because I'm no <laughs> no producers like, "What's number one?" Exactly. It was really funny the way that she delivered. Was this when the they line. were dressing up? For the, yeah, for she the had fair. a Marie Antoinette party. Oh, well, no. Oh, the they, the, the Renaissance party. was a different episode. Different. <laughs> Slutty Renaissance Fair. Loved. Yeah. Oh, okay, guys. Well. Do not forget to rate and review. We love waking up to new reviews. It makes my whole day. Yeah. So please. We're curating a bunch. And in a future episode, we're going to be reading some of them out. Not some of them. We're going to read all the new ones out. So. Yes. So if you want to get read out loud, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Please, please, yeah. please. And this is a request from me. Um, yeah. If you have movie suggestions that you want us to cover, DM yeah. us or write it in the comments of like our social medias. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram and YouTube. 
please. And don't make us have a difficult conversation with you. It's, it has to be a star vehicle, not just whatever your number two favorite movie yeah, is. Yeah, just not so. just willy-nilly what you like, please. Yeah. Like Chanel's favorite movie is Saving Private Ryan, but we're not going to do that. We're not doing that for the show. We're not. <laughs> it would be inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it might be a star vehicle for Tom Hanks, though. Oh, mm. my God. No. I don't want to be. I don't want to be giggling around Saving Private Ryan right now. <laughs> okay. I feel very afraid. <laughs> very afraid. Anyway. Okay. Well, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thanks, Stephen. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs>